Weathering and soils notes. There are two types of weathering. There's physical weathering, which sometimes we also say mechanical weathering, so they're used interchangeably, mechanical and physical, and then chemical weathering. Physical weathering is a change in the size or shape of a rock without changing the chemical composition. So we're perhaps just breaking it apart, not changing the way it's made. How does physical weathering happen? Plant roots break the rock. Animals can burrow into a rock. Water can break down the rock by friction. There's the freeze-thaw way of weathering, which is when water enters cracks and rocks, freezes and widens the crack, and then melts and it occurs over and over and over again, eventually it's going to widen that little crack in the rock, which can also be called ice wedging. If you think about when you put an ice cube tray in the freezer, if you fill it up too full, when the ice expands from the water freezing, it's not going to be individual cubes anymore because it will have frozen completely together from the water expanding above the individual little cups for the ice. So we know water expands when it freezes, which is how these cracks in the rock get pulled into larger cracks. Exfoliation, same thing, um, like perhaps you use a pumice stone on rough skin patches. Exfoliation is the same thing here. Windblown particles hit rock, breaking off tiny pieces or little sheets of rock. So when that happens over and over again, you're breaking down the major rock. Temperature changes. The expansion and contraction of rock can break it into smaller pieces. So maybe in the desert, when it gets really hot during the day and really cold at night, this is probably more likely to happen. And then chemical weathering, a breakdown of rock by agents that cause chemical changes in the rocks. We're actually changing what the rock's made of. Oxidation produces rust. Oxygen in the atmosphere combines with metals in the rock. It's actually going to turn that rusty color, which we call oxidation. Carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere combines with water in the atmosphere to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid falls on the ground and dissolves limestone, marble, or calcite, which can also produce caves. So this is um, acid rain, essentially. And you have the formula on your note sheet. H2O is water. CO2 is carbon dioxide which combine to form H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. And then when that acid falls on things like limestone, if you think about what we did in the mineral lab, I put the hydrochloric acid on that little bit of calcite and it sizzled and ate away a little bit of the calcite. It's the same thing here, except that's carbonic acid. Hydrolysis occurs when water, usually in the form of precipitation, changes the chemical composition of a rock and creates less stable rocks than weather more readily. So hydrolysis, hydro means water, lysis is like a breakdown. If you think about cells, um, if you've done biology, it's going to be a breakdown by water. And then plant acids. Some plants produce an acid that reacts with rocks. And the example is lichen. That's how you pronounce that word, lichen. Um, it grows on rocks and it sort of, eat, sort of eats away at it, kind of like a mold. And doing a little review here, we're going to look at some pictures and see what you can determine about the type of weathering that's occurred, whether it's physical or chemical. And then identify the specific process that caused the weathering. We've got a tree here growing out of some rocks. Is it chemical or is it physical? Hopefully it said physical. And that would be the roots going down into the rock, um, breaking them apart. 
And then here we're looking at some higher areas of sediment and some lower areas of sediment. And that's also going to be physical because you could have either erosion or wind blowing the particles away. And water going over a waterfall. This would also be physical because the wearing away of this rock underneath the water as it goes over and over and over again, that's physical because we're not changing the composition of anything yet. And if you've noticed on the book, this is the cover of our book we have in the classroom. Um, getting the wearing away looks like this. It's also going to be physical. Same thing with erosion or wind. And this little thing right here is a glacier. So the glacier is moving down, pushing the sediment out of the way. That could be physical or mechanical, or physical or chemical, rather. Hopefully you're saying physical because I said it's pushing it out of the way. It's not changing the composition at all. Here we go. Now we're in a cave. You can see where water might have come down through this little sunlight area and carved out this whole big area, and then here's the water down here. So is that physical or chemical? You should be saying chemical because in order to eat away this whole big cave right here, we had to have had some acid, and then there's probably some calcite or limestone or marble that got dissolved. So that would be chemical. And then here we're looking at a hammer. Hammer has broken away this piece of rock. So if you want to think about it that way, it would be physical. But if you take a little bit closer look, you can see this reddish area here looks a little bit like rust or oxidation, which would have been chemical. So this one could be either one, depending upon your argument. And this is a picture of lichen. That's what I said grows on the side of rock sometimes in shady areas. And it sort of eats away the rock. So that would be chemical as well, because we talked about that as plant acid. Weathered rock forms sediment. Sediments and organic matter, which is humus, it's not hummus. Hummus is like the stuff you eat. Humus is organic matter, which is like dead leaves and that sort of stuff breaking down. So sediments and organic matter, which can also be known as humus, form soil. So we've talked about weathering rock. That forms sediments, which we've talked about in the past. Think about the rock cycle. And then from those sediments, you're going to stick sediments together with humus in order to make soil. Soil is a mixture of organic material and weathered rock that form over a long period of time. Long, long period of time. Factors that affect soil formation. The climate, the parent rock, which is where the soil comes from, the organisms that are nearby, the relief, which is like the slope or topography, how steep an area is, and then the time that the sediment or soil has had to form. A soil profile. There are different layers of soil are called horizons. Just like when you look out at the sun as it sets, it's a horizon. So different layers are called horizons. And all horizons stuck together make a profile. Just like when we talked about topographic profiles, you see different layers, different levels of elevations. Same thing here with the different horizons for soils. And here's a picture of some different soil horizons. And it says, a layer of soil approximately parallel to the surface having distinct characteristics produced by soil forming processes used to classify the soil and make interpretations. So at the very top, we've got the O horizon. That's only about two inches deep. That's the organic matter. That's all that stuff that's breaking down like leaves. And then the A horizon. That's where you start to get very shallow roots for grasses and that sort of thing. The B horizon, that's where you have the deeper roots, like tree roots. And then C, um, you've got more 
um, more rock and less sediment. And then down here would be what we call the parent rock, which is not any soil at all. It's just rock. The O horizon is the uppermost layer. It has organic matter on top of the soil. The A horizon is the top soil layer, which includes plant roots. It's dark in color because of that material that's breaking down, making the soil richer. There's a whole lot of organic matter, again, because that O horizon is breaking down right above it. And this is also called the zone of accumulation because, again, of all that organic matter that accumulates over time in the A horizon as it breaks down. The B horizon is under the A horizon. It's lighter in color because it doesn't have as much of that material breaking down. It has some organic matter and some roots and some weathered rock, which is also called the zone of leaching. Um, if you think about something bleeding into another area, um, that can be called leaching. And the C horizon is under the B horizon and it's mostly weathered rocks, so lots of stones and that sort of thing instead of sediments. And, and then the parent rock is under the C and that's the type of rock that weathers to produce the soil. So this is just solid rock, it's like the bedrock. And the importance of soil location, residual soil forms and stays in the same place. So like a resident, a resident stays where the person lives, right? That's residual. Transported soil, just like it says, soil moves from place to place. It goes around, it forms in one place, but then it moves to another. The transported soil is the most common. We've talked about erosion and wind blowing and all those sorts of things that move the soil around. Soil particle size. Um, soil particles are classified by their size, and that's where the name comes from. When you talk about sand at the beach, you're talking about the fact that the grains are 2 millimeters to 0 0.02 millimeters. You're not just saying, oh, there's sand at the beach. You're talking about the actual size of the particle. And then as it gets smaller, it changes name to silt. And then when it's even smaller than 0.002 millimeters, it's called clay. When you feel clay between your fingers, it's sort of soft because the particles are so small. And right now I recommend that you flip your notes over and you just write down a couple of things about the last few things that I have to talk about. Mass movement and erosion. Mass movement refers to the downward transportation of weathered material. So we're talking about moving a whole lot of stuff all at once. Erosion is the removal and transport of materials by natural agents, which hopefully you knew by now. Talus are rock fragments that have been weathered from a cliff. A landslide is a movement of a massive amount of bedrock down the side of a mountain, typically. Um, happens a lot in California or where we have a lot of rain. Creep, slow, imperceptible movement of soil down a slope. So like if you're going to creep around because you don't want anybody to find you, same thing here. Earth flows, saturated soil moves downhill. Mud flows are movement of water that contains large amounts of clay and silt. That's why it's called a mud flow. And slump are blocks of land that move downward and form a curve. Soil as a resource. Soil fertility is the ability of soil to grow plants. Problems with using soil as a resource is that the soil can get depleted. Um, if you've ever heard about crop rotation, you can't grow things like beans um, in one place year after year after year because those beans are going to pull out certain nutrients from the soil and then it'll get depleted of those certain nutrients. Salinization is when you get too much salt in the soil and then you can't use it to grow anything anymore. And then erosion just means the breakdown and transportation of soil. Um, some things that we can do to conserve soil. Wind breaks are installed just to block the wind from blowing onto the surface and moving the particles away. 
contour farming is using the landscape of the land the way it is without trying to change it. You don't want to flatten it out in order to make nice flat fields. You're just going to use it the way that it is. Terracing um, is kind of like stair steps. You make one area above another and then you step down and you do another area and then you step down and you have another area so that you can use a slope to do farming. And then strip cropping is when um, instead of uh, tilling the soil to plant new crops, you just take this machine and it cuts everything off at the base without tilling up the soil. Because if you don't till, then when it rains, it's not going to wash away.